Hi, Mr. President. Um, once again, this is an honor to be a part of this, so thank you for taking time out. Um, but my question is, at a time when Americans are struggling to pay for daily necessities, you've continued to push higher education for all Americans, but what is your plan to help students pay off all their student loans? Well, first of all, when I say uh, a college education, I think what uh, people should be clear about is, I'm really talking about higher education, education beyond high school. Um, it doesn't mean that everybody needs a four-year college education. It may be that somebody has incredible uh, uh, aptitude with computer graphics and they want to be a computer designer. And they may just need uh, a couple of years at a community college to get those skills before they're immediately on the job. Uh, it may be somebody has mechanical aptitude and they want to become uh, a skilled uh, you know, tool maker. And you know, they can get a training program uh, in a year or two that allows them to work with uh, high-tech equipment in a factory. Uh, but the point is that it's, it's very hard for somebody who just has a high school education to be able to get a well-paying job uh, that allows you to support a family. And I want to encourage everybody to have access to that uh, higher education, whether it's at a community college or a four-year college or beyond. Now, what we've tried to do is to make college more affordable without putting more of a burden on taxpayers. One of the biggest things we did last year was to sign into law a bill that took away $60 billion in subsidies that were going to banks uh, because they were the middleman on the student loan program. We said, let's give the loans directly to students. We can take that, those billions of dollars and we can provide more assistance to students directly. And that's helped a lot of students. We've also got coming up uh, a, uh, a concern of mine. If Congress doesn't act, then the interest rates on student loans are going to go up this summer. And so I've urged Congress at the State of the Union to do something about that right away, as well as extend existing tax credits that help families. Uh, but the final thing that uh, I've been trying to encourage is for colleges and universities to think more about how to make higher education affordable. Uh, some of this is not the faults of colleges and universities. When it comes to state uh, colleges and universities, they've been getting less support from the states. And so I urge state legislatures to do their job and prioritize higher education more in their budgets. But every college and university can also think about are there additional ways that they can hold down costs. And what we're going to start doing is incentivizing, providing uh, uh, you know, additional dollars to those schools that have come up with creative ways to keep costs down. Some schools, for example, are saying you can get a degree in three years. Well, that saves you a year's worth of tuition, but you get the same uh, uh, skills base that allows you to go out there and work. There may be better ways to use technology. I mean, you look at uh, what we're doing today. Uh, this is something where, uh, you know, potentially a lot of folks can take classes uh, without ever actually being in a classroom and uh, having all the, the costs of room and board. So there may be ways that we can uh, reduce costs. I want to encourage those, but I want all of you guys uh, to understand you can't stop at high school. First of all, you got to graduate, and then uh, you guys are going to have to do some more stuff uh, because we're going to need you. Adam, what would you think of? Well, I would just like to know what advice would you give to a person like me that does come from a middle-class family and we would struggle to make ends meet and possibly not being able to find a job after receiving this higher education uh, what advice would you have as far as wanting to still pursue a higher education with the fear of not being able to pay off those student loans? Well, uh, first of all, uh, you're going to be able to afford college. You will probably take on some debt. Michelle and I took on debt when we graduated from college and law school. We were able to pay it off. It is important, though, to, uh, and I, I, I wish that uh, uh, it wasn't the case, uh, where you, you could just go to college and have fun for four years and then after that kind of make up your mind what you want to do. I think young people probably have a little more responsibility now to think ahead to make sure that when you make that investment it's actually in pursuing a career where you can have some confidence that you're going to be able to find a job down the road. Uh, and uh, you know I think that sometimes young people go into school and it's four years of having fun and then sort of their senior year, they start thinking, oh, you know, I, I better start thinking about what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. 
Um, you know, college is a big enough investment now where you've got to kind of think ahead. Uh, and, you know, your counselors uh, and, you know, uh, other adults can potentially help you to identify what are going to be some of the growth areas of the future uh, so that you make a good investment. You know, Mr. President, I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm sure there are some kids that do go to school three years and the fourth year they're like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Um, but really, I don't believe that's a lot of kids. A lot of um, high school kids, college kids have seen their parents get laid off right. and no money. And because of the downturn of the economy, um, a, a lot of kids, high school kids, college kids, well, even mainly, you know, high school kids like we're talking today, they worry about even entering college because they don't want to have that debt. They don't, you know, they see their father not even able to have a job. I mean, I, I can understand that valid fear. I'm sure, though, there are kids that do go to school and they kind of goof off and then they're like, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do? But for the most part, I, I believe that our kids are just seeing what is happening with the economy and, and it's affecting them. Well, you know, Jennifer, you're absolutely right that obviously the last three years has been tough, especially for young people getting out of college and starting their careers. On the other hand, here's what's really important to know, and we as parents have to communicate this to our kids. The unemployment rate for folks who only have a high school uh, diploma is multiple times higher than for folks who've got a college degree. So even in this economic downturn, even as tough as things have been, mm -hmm. the odds that you are going to do much, much better over your lifetime, over your career, in terms of lifetime earnings, being able to find a job, uh, not uh, being at high, as high a, a risk of, of unemployment, is much better if you've gotten a, a higher education degree. So you're right that you know, when times are tough, Obviously, people are a lot more concerned about taking on debt, and I think it's good that a lot of young people are trying to stay focused and saying, all right, before I make this uh, investment, what is it that uh, I'm going to get out of it? But right. it's important to remember that that investment is still mm -hmm. the best thing that young people can do, although not everybody needs a four-year degree. And one of the things we've got to do more of is to try to link up uh, high school students who may have, as I said, the, the capacity to become a really skilled uh, uh, worker, but they don't necessarily need a, a BA in order to, to, to do it, and it, they may end up saving money going uh, and getting a, a, a two-year degree as opposed to a four-year degree. So it's going to vary Mr. by people. Mr. Brother, Mr. President, I want, to, I want to take some time. So uh, so sorry, short follow. I want to make sure we have some time for a, a few more internet questions, but uh, Quick follow. Yeah, I was just going to share with you my story, Mr. President. Personally, just I think the other thing is that parents can also plan far more in advance. I know in my case, my son just got a full scholarship to a college in the East Coast, but we worked hard for that. We planned, we saved years in advance. We tried to encourage him to be smart enough to get that academic scholarship. We're also middle class. I don't have a lot of money. However, we've worked hard as a family to help nurture that, that soil, as it were. So when he's, he's 17 now, when he graduates, thankfully, he's in play now that we don't have to have any debt. So everybody can't do that, but I just wanted to share that personal story of advanced preparation for families as well, if that helps someone. Right. Well, the, the, yes. the, the, point is, the point is it's still a good investment, uh, Jennifer, but you're absolutely right that, look, uh, you know, uh, any time that we go through the kind of economic crisis we went through in 2008, 2009, you know, that's gonna affect uh, the psyches of a lot of young people, and that's why we have to make sure that they're thinking not just what's happening the, uh, over the next year or two, but as the economy grows stronger, reminding them that when those jobs come back, for example, when I saw, uh, talked to a group of CEOs who are bringing manufacturing jobs back here to the United States, I want all those young people to be ready and able to start hiring uh, or, or getting hired right away because they've got the skill sets that are going to be needed uh, for them to be able to, to succeed.